in excess of 200,000. That's how many children have lost a parent or a caregiver to COVID in the United States. Worldwide, that number reaches 5 million. To help children cope with these losses, Lindsay Davis has written a new book called How High is Heaven? Take a look. Lindsay Davis is an author, Emmy Award-winning journalist, and news anchor for ABC News. While looking for books for her son, Lindsay noticed a shortage of diversity represented in most of them. So she decided to do something about it. In her latest children's book, How High is Heaven? Lindsay helps families cope with the loss of loved ones while also allowing kids to see characters they can relate to. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, Lindsay Davis. Lindsay, it's great to have you with us today. Thanks so much for having me back, Terry. Talk a little bit, if you will, about how it was your son, Aiden, who inspired you to write this new book. You know, he came home from school one day a few years ago, and he said, how come my friend had two grandmas and two grandpas, and I just have one of each? And so immediately I started talking to him about Grandma P, my husband's mother, who passed away when my son was about one. And so I was showing him pictures of, together, and he said, well, I want to see her. And I was saying, well, here, this is her in the picture. And he said, no, I want to go to heaven and see her. And it was something that he became really fixated with for days, became weeks. And then fast forward several months later, we were on a plane and he was looking outside of the window and he said, I don't see her. And I said, you don't see who? And he said, I don't see Grandma P. I thought while we were up here in heaven uh, that I was going to see her. And it was in that moment that I said, you know, the conversation exchange that we're having about this and the idea of heaven and this little boy wanting to go to heaven to, to reconnect with his grandmother, I need to make this a book. Yeah. And How High is Heaven is the title. Is that the premise of the book, the same story as Aiden's? Yes. So I kind of, you know, took some liberties with that, the idea of this little boy trying to figure out all these different ways that he could get to heaven, because that's how he kept asking, you know, how he could go, when he could go, how old he needed to be in order to go to heaven. And so the premise of the book pretty much is this little boy who's trying to build a Lego brick staircase, a pogo stick, a trampoline, a hot air balloon spaceship, all these different ways to physically try to get there. And then at the end, during the arc of the story, realizes that it's not about that. That's not uh, the destination of heaven in a, in a physical sense of, of getting there. So a book like this, really, um, one of the greatest uses of it is simply to have discussion with your children, right? To talk to them about questions like he's asking. You can't go now, <laughs> but one day. How do, how do people use the book to help children who've lost someone who's died? You know, I, I hope, and what I've heard so far, really some great feedback that I've gotten from uh, parents who actually say not only did it help in having the conversation with their, their children, but they maybe had just lost a, a parent themselves. And they said, you know, when I was reading the book to my child, I actually felt inspired. And that's what I'm, I'm hoping is that it would give people a little sense of comfort, some hope, some solace, the idea that this is not goodbye, but see you later. And that was when I saw my son kind of finally settle, when he, he thought, okay, I will see her again, right? There, this day is gonna come. For now, I'm gonna just enjoy heaven here on earth, but I will have that opportunity uh, to, to be reunited. And, and that's what I, I hope that that's the sense that, that people come away with, that they're, that they're uplifted um, by the idea that, that, that we will see our loved ones again. You're an award-winning journalist. This is your fourth children's book. I know how busy the life of a journalist can be. What motivated you to begin writing books for children? You know, first it was it was the idea of, of representation and, and seeing that, that I wasn't, I had to be so intentional and deliberate um, when I was choosing books in order for them to, to have characters who look like my son. Um, but I think just the idea of, of being a, a reporter and an anchor by day and, 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 and really looking at myself as a storyteller in general um, was the, the, and it was able to, I was able to, I think, um, kind of convert the same principles that I use for news in, in writing these stories. But, but now I can kind of literally and figuratively tell the good news. And this is something that quite often when I'm doing the news on TV, um, I, I want to kind of shield my son from it. I feel like he's too young to, to see some of these things. But this was a way in writing these children's books that are they're all faith based um, was a way of something having something that I could share 100 percent with my son. I'm glad you mentioned faith based and your work. I, I'm wondering how as a woman of faith, do you balance your work with what you believe? 
You know, well, again, if I separate it and, and call it a day job, even though it's really an all day long job, but as a journalist, I do think that there literally is a separation of, of church and state, if you will. And um, I, I feel that, that one of the aspects that I really enjoy and love about writing the, the children's books is it's a, it's a place where I can be my authentic self and, and really share and express and, and convey uh, my convictions and, and my beliefs and, and core principles. And so, Lindsay, do you feel like it's opening up in the day that we live in again, where people who do the kind of work you do can be candid and open about their faith and their everyday work? I feel that outside of the realm, when I'm not at the anchor desk or with the reporter microphone, I feel that there is a space for that. There is, um, you know, I think there are people who don't want to hear that, but I think that there are people who are really receptive and you know, especially in, in these kind of heavy times that we're that we're living in, I think that the people of you say, you know, I'm going to pray for you, or you're you're in my thoughts. You're you know uh, certainly going to be lifting you up in, in prayer. I think that there is an appreciation um, for that, and, and I think it's just a matter of you know where you are able to really open it up and and have and share that. Um, but but again, I do try to to keep it separate from as my life as a as a journalist. Well, I want people to know this is book number four. Lindsay's book is called How High is Heaven? It's available wherever books are sold. Lindsay, thank you. It's so good to have you with us again today. Bless you.